Please, sir. Well, you're muted, too. There we go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday. Let's go into the weekend here. NFT Morning Show. We run this show Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10, 15 a.m. Eastern Time each and every week, where we discuss all things NFTs, crypto, stocks, finance, gaming, entertainment, technology, culture, and everything in between. I'm your host, P.O., here with my co-host, Nifty Nick, the funniest man in the business, King Kicks, the CEO of Crypto Raiders, the intelligent degenerate no one made more money in the bull market than he did that didn't trade board apes easy eats bodega the host of gmgm market talk among other popular shows in the web3 twitter sphere and the founder of bodago soon to hit a blockchain near you signal the host of the new for uh, us the new vertical artist spotlight Content that we're incredibly excited about. Can't wait to see that develop and always love having Signal bring her takes on the show. Extremely analytical. Uh, and last but not last but not least, Bunny. Bunny, it just says that you love Bodago's hashtag ad in your bio. Yeah, Easy said I'm contractually obligated to have that in the bio. So I just wanted to disclose properly. Wow. Well, I'm surprised to hear that. So part of the contract of you being, uh, you know, an on the payroll content creator at the Nifty is that you have to disclose just that you you love Bodagos, but that is a hashtag ad. But Pio, he yeah. also didn't read the fine print. Uh, every percent of profit that he makes, he actually has to pay me 96 percent as well. So I'm really <laughs> excited about the trades he's been making recently. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a pretty good deal for easy all around, right? Yeah, I knew Bunny wouldn't read, so I just took advantage of the situation. That was a good call. You're going to send my ape back, though, right? You promised me you were going to animate it and send it right back. I feel like it's been taking a little bit. No, yeah, thanks for uh, signing that transaction in MetaMask. Uh, nothing bad is ever going to happen there. Uh, it's in a good place. Thanks. I'm stoked on this 3D render, man. Nick? Yeah. Yeah. So what are the subjects that are covered on this show real quick? Can we just recap that? It's uh, are we throwing politics in there now as well? Well, when there are notable political stories, it's totally, totally on the table to dive into politics. Well, Is there something that's well, going on, Nick? I thought no. we met about this. We, we agreed we're going to do politics, religion, and how much people make. Religion and sexuality. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I think sexuality should go in there as well, and just gender stuff. I saw that as well. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, Mario hit tackling the tough subjects like gender pronouns. Like, I think we should have a conversation about that for a bit because people are really excited uh, to cover that. Um, so, but but real quick, um, what I'm wondering about uh, outside of we have breaking news here. A suspected Chinese spy balloon has been found out from northern U.S. How is this impacting the NFT market, P.O.? I don't know. What is I'm Kevin, just kidding. We, what we, does we Kevin McCarthy say. think of that? Dude, I've been having a lot of conversations. My people on the ground in D.C. have been paying attention to what Kevin McCarthy has to say, and they've been wondering when will it, when will it end because we went through one whole <laughs> uh, cycle of – him not even getting the leadership, but now the place feels leaderless, even with him as the leader. And that's the conversation that a lot of people in the NFT space have been having. First, they go from interest rates. Then they talk about Kevin McCarthy. Then they discuss spy balloons over the U.S. And it's just, you know, it's really impacting a lot of people in the NFT space. You know, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. China, they got they got fucking satellites, dude. They got fucking spy planes. They sent over a hot air balloon, dude. That's like someone like liking an ex's, you know, Instagram profile from four years ago. Like they wanted <laughs> to get caught. You know what I mean? Like they 100 percent was like, let's go fuck with the USA. Let's send that old ass hot air balloon over like the, the northwest. Um, well, what I'm trying to figure out here is how this impacts. Uh, some of the collections, the NFT collections that Signal brought up yesterday. Um, you know, she she had brought up a couple on the show, and a lot of people. I'm trying to figure out if China is monitoring like OpenSea data or listening to this show, even probably <clears throat> as an indicator of where the market is heading, and then uh, and then you know making trades based on that. A lot of people say that 
Asia has influence over the NFT marketplace, but are they also spying on our transactions somehow in a way that we weren't previously aware of? Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, Nick is kind of having a little bit of a victory lap this morning uh, because the trade that we did live on yesterday's show. I, I just, I edited this. Uh, I'm just accepting an offer. I, I, I updated a. Okay, so he's in the throes of personal portfolio management because he's excited that he had a nice little cook. Well, uh, the signal uh, brought up the uh, merge. What is it? Merge VV yesterday. Correct. That went from a two Xer to like almost a six Xer. Three X check 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 one two check one two three. <laughs> did, you, did you did you exit? Um, I uh, so I had swept a couple of items. Um, and I am selling on the way up. So I've still got a couple left, but I'm I'm free rolling, baby. I'm free rolling. Everybody just, making money. Bender, look at that. Swept a few items. The casual signal. Big flex. Big Starts flex. the morning off. Check out these, check out these flexing guns here. Oh, yeah, no, geez. like 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 Spencer, this year I'm all about less plays, high conviction. So yeah, I'm pleased with that one. And that and I'm I'm just surprised that Nick asked if you sold any after yesterday you lectured him on that you should always list as soon as you buy P something. I saw Pio's uh so Pio followed that model and I saw his selling yesterday. Uh and I was getting alerts about that, which was uh pretty pretty it was interesting. premature. It was a it was premature selling, uh, but because we have so much going on, and and yesterday specifically, I was tackling like four or five different things that required a lot of mental energy. I just found my, the the first time I found myself checking the floor price of those two collections, I was like, okay, that that's enough. These have to go. These. Can I cannot be checking this at all today. Um, so look, ladies and gentlemen, today's daily question, I've tweeted it. I'm going to pin it to the top right now. What it's, gender pronoun do you Okay, oh, no, 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 that's not the daily that's question, Nick. Okay, my that, apologies. That's not it. It's, uh, it's what is your favorite book? That's a lot less controversial of a question there, Nikki. Uh, what is your favorite book? Nick, what's your favorite book, buddy? Uh, man, well... That's a hard one for me to answer. I'm going to be honest. There's there's a lot of books that I've enjoyed over the years, and and I enjoy them for varying uh, reasons. For example, in the nonfiction area, there's a number of things that I enjoy. Atomic Habits was a solid one uh, that I read a couple of years back, and that one was really good. The current one I'm reading is The Great CEO Within. And let me tell you, if you're into uh, running a startup uh, that's in its early stages, that book is a banger. Um, and so, uh, that one I highly recommend, uh, I, <clears throat> there's also a uh, nonfiction ones and then also audible books as well, which I would include in there, like the best audible or the first audible that changed my whole perspective on audible as a whole and audio books was, um, uh, the, what's the Mars, uh, the, the Mars book with Matt Damon, uh, the movie that they did. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. No. The Martian. The Martian. The Martian. Men are from Mars. <laughs> women are from Venus. Just trying to mess with you. Um, the, the, Mar the, Martian. the Martian was just incredible. Like the narration going on in that book on Audible made it like you were listening to a movie. And a similar one that did that, which then was converted into a movie, was Where the Crawdads Sing. That one turned out to be an actual. That was a great book. Great Why is title. Kicks laughing right now. Unmute yourself, sir. This sounds like one of those dumbass books I had to ring in English class, dude. Like, <laughs> just based on the title alone, dude. Well, we got a, a real champ, uh, Kicks book reader over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just demonstrating his cultural lit literacy here. <laughs> uh, easy. Is your favorite book Harry Potter? Yeah, absolutely. The second one. The second one. Okay. Ambrose Signal or Prisoner of Azkaban. Either one. Both quality. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan as well, uh, but definitely not number two. I think like the best one was one and seven. But anyway, it's all good. <laughs> um, or oh, best book. Uh, if I go back to my like like ages ago on nonfiction, I would say probably uh, the original Lord of the Rings books. They were really good. Really, really good. I mean, yeah. they're popular books. They've been around for a bit. You know, people it. know about them. I got into pop science fiction for a bit, and uh, Ender's Game was uh, was a classic. 
Uh, that's an old book, but uh, was very good. Harry Potter, I read the first like three or four. I got tired of it at a certain point. Yeah, you were already a grown man at that point. Slaughterhouse reading Five. Reading children's books as a grown man. Great book. That's a classic. Uh, I'm also, what's the one with the, uh, the, the recent one, the, uh, with the VR and everyone lives in VR and they're playing. ready player one, ready player one. That was a phenomenal book. Are, that you, was just, are you reading like off of a list, like top 10 most popular? I'm scrolling, books? I'm scrolling through my Kindle actually to see what I'd been reading and I'd enjoyed another one, American dirt. That one was ridiculous. Uh, the, this, uh, did you read that Pia? I, I didn't, but so Nick, the question of the day was, what is your favorite book? Not what is every book that you've ever read in your entire life? It, my, my issue is, is there's not one favorite. Every single one of these played a different role. And P.O.'s asked, you know, he asked about what mentors you had, who was someone that you looked up to. And for myself, the inspiration, my mentors ended up being books that I was reading, P.O. And that, <laughs> that turned out to be where I was. Now, here's the crazy thing. I didn't really start reading until I was like 18. Or something like that. Straight Sounds up. Sounds about right. Well, I was on Adderall. And then once <laughs> I started taking Adderall, I was like just churning through books left and right. Technically, that was 17. And I was reading books on like textbooks on finance and stuff like that because I, I realized the power of reading at that point in time. So anyways... It sounds like a very healthy life that you've lived thus far, Nick. Uh, just want to shout out some audience members uh, with their book calls. Mr. Wizard made a great contribution on the show the other day when talking about open editions. Mr. Wizard said the Bitcoin standard by Safe Dean Amos, uh, the Bitcoin Bible, if you will. So great, great call right there, Mr. Wizard. That, Zet, that, that, that's your favorite book? Like you read that book and you're just like, good my book. God, this is bringing me on, on a journey that I've never experienced before. It's, it's a good book. Uh, Crypto for NFT, Punk3770, great uh, trader, a member of the Nifty community, hung out with her in person a few times in New York at various NFT events. And uh, she's been on the show. She said her favorite is Outlier. I don't know if she means Outliers by Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell. Gladwell. A very, very well-known book. She said she's reading Demon Copperhead now. She highly recommends it. I don't know exactly uh, what book that is. Jay, who is Jay Lettuce Wrist, I see him listening all the time, said A Brave New World is such good fiction. We're going to shout out more audience, uh, you know, more more listeners, you know, favorite books. No. Bunny, Bunny has his hand. Wait, 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 hold on one sec. Wait, I don't get a no. chance to shout out any of these people. I feel like that's that's like a key part of this show. Well, you did talk about every book you've ever read, and it bled now, into I, the now, time for I this segment. I want to apologize. I'm sorry. I want to apologize to everybody. That I didn't mean to, to hog that time, but here we go. Test to Teb, uh, Red Goosebumps. Um, Sarah Script took an opportunity to uh, shill some of her artwork. Uh, uh, the book <laughs> Sarah. Being Fomeo and Juliet. Uh, Lurk Loves You enjoyed Clifford the Big Red Dog. Um, that's That's a classic. Uh, as a child, um, Hustler Magazine from Johnny Blaze. Uh, does that still exist? <laughs> That's a very funny comment by Johnny Blaze, as usual. Cryptopolis says, how to bang your mom. Oh, okay. Cryptopolis has a is, couple is screws that, loose. Is that a book? I don't know if it is. That's just inappropriate. I think um, so, too. The, uh, the Easy Way to Stop Smoking by Alan Carr from Rocky Rocky. I like that. I like it too. Bunny, you had your hand raised. Did you want to weigh in with your favorite book? No, I've never read a book. Uh, <laughs> this is breaking news, man. Uh, Russia's largest bank is set to open a, a DeFi platform on ETH. Wow. Look at that. All the yeah. ETH boys are going to be uh, retweeting that one today. We'll have to see what happens. Um, very interesting news event. Hey, look, today's show, ladies and gentlemen, is sponsored by us. And specifically our newsletter. So if you look pinned to the top, you can sign up for our newsletter at the nifty.com. You're going to want to wink, wink. Before we dive into the weather report, Nick, was there anything you wanted to add as the sponsor of our own show? Uh, before I do Spencer, that, maybe. I want to expand on the story that uh, was just shared. Is this just not an opportunity for Russia to, they were like, hey, let's see if we can get some of this crypto cash, you know, because we're going broke. I mean, I, it, it I, absolutely I, could be. I don't know. Yeah, that one's not a positive spin for me on that on that news report. In terms of uh, as a sponsor of this show, the nifty.com, just I'm tired. I'm I'm tired of saying it, man. I'm just tired of saying it. 
So I'm not going to say sign up for the nifty.com. Like just don't like it, it either, either you're going to make it or you're not. Uh, are you good? Which category of those do you want to fall into? NGMI or WGMI? Which of those two are you going to fit fall into? If you're in the camp of WGMI, you're probably on the newsletter already. If you're not, and you want to be in that camp, that's probably where you'd end up. But I'm just, I'm tired of saying it. I'm not going to keep saying sign up for the newsletter at the nifty.com. I'm just not going to keep saying that, you know? Well, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard from the man himself. So on to the weather report. Uh, Looking forward to the weather team dishing it out. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, here's our weather report segment. Please take it away. Well played where you didn't say which one of it, like, because you didn't know. And you almost confused me, but it's my day today, P.O. So over to you, Nick, live in the weather room today, Friday, the 3rd of February. Oh, excuse me. What does that mean? Over to you, Nick. Oh, to you, Over to him, yes, yes. Just making a little joke. P.O. didn't like it so much, but it's okay. (laughs) I'm a volume guy in the joke game. Uh, OpenSea, speaking of volume, $12.5 million. Still ranging in that same area. Looking over at the leaders, we got Apes, 17.2. Mutants, 15. Punks, 63.9. But there's been some big punk hoodie sales that I've seen across my timeline. Azuki holding strong, 15 ETH. Moonbirds pulling back a little bit, 7.4. Doodle, 6.1. Pudgy's looking nice, 5.9. Clonex about to be removed from the list, 4.97. We don't, we don't let people below 5 ETH on the leader list, unfortunately. Over the past 24 hours, Chex continues to climb the open edition collection, which was $8 to mint, hit new all-time highs. The burn hasn't begun yet, but the 16K supply is heading towards the direction of a 2 ETH floor after hitting a high of 1.7 ETH. If you feel like a bozo like me for missing that, don't worry. Only 3,800 people in the world made generational wealth off that. Other Jack Butcher plays, Opepins and Merge, have both benefited from the success of checks with Opepins hitting almost 0.2 ETH and Merge almost touching 0.1. We got that alpha live on the show yesterday from Signal. Hope you made a move on it. History was made over on uh, the Bitcoin blockchain yesterday after the largest block and the largest transaction in Bitcoin history hosted a four megabyte NFT called Taproot Wizards by Udi Wertheimer. Um, I know that guy. I follow him on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I was saying, I think Bitcoin NFTs are, you know, P.O., I hit you up about this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Proof announced that people will live mint 100 NFTs at the conference in May. That's pretty cool. 100 lucky winners will receive a Beeple every day. And speaker lineup includes Alexis Ohanian, Snowfro, Yuga Labs, Frank to Gods, and Larva Labs. So awesome lineup there. Uh, last but not least, looking over at Bitcoin and the rest of crypto, we got Bitcoin 23.4, ETH 1650 range, Solana 24 range, Ape just below $6.00. And uh, the jobs report came out today and it just blew out the numbers. Uh, it was supposed to come in at 180. It came in at like 540. So I'm sure we'll talk about that today. That's it for your weather report. Over to you in the studio, Mr. P.O. F- fantastic weather report. As usual, kick some other updates from the newsletter we were just talking about. You can sign up at the nifty.com. Someone responded to the show and said, where do I sign up? The nifty.com, T-H-E-N-I-F-T-Y.com. Uh, OpenSea has introduced a new feature, a three-hour holding protection period. It's a mechanism to mitigate theft risks by requiring sellers not to accept offers for specific NFTs within three hours of transfer transfers and sales. Um, NFT minting platform manifold which we've been talking about a lot over the past month or so because of the open edition trend that we saw announced a new monetization plan which entails charging buyers a flat fee of one dollar on all transactions board a yacht club released a leaderboard video where they recap everything that's been happening with dookie dash including top scores consoles tricks and tips on how to play 
Uh, other updates, uh, Kevin Rose has actually gone on an airdropping spree. So Kevin Rose, the founder of Proof and Moonbirds, has begun to airdrop NFTs to random Moonbird holders who use the Moonbird as their profile picture. Moonbird's profile picture Twitter accounts replied to his tweet with their Ethereum address, and he sent over a variety of NFTs ranging from oddities, X-Copy Max Payne, Pathfinders, Tiger Bob, and artwork by Ed Balloon. So uh, interesting move by Kevin Rose. I think he's kind of throwing his hands in the air and saying people are complaining no matter what I do. I'm just going to give people free shit because that's all that anybody in the NFT cares about. Uh, other than that, Beeple uh, every day is going to be, uh, there's going to be a live mint at Proof Conference. So a Beeple every day will be minted to 200 lucky winners at Proof of Conference. 100 will go to current collectors and 100 will go to conference attendees. The floor for every day is almost at 20 Ethereum. Uh, so interesting moves there by Proof, really trying to lean into giving people free stuff. Um, anyway, that's it for your updates from the newsletter. Uh, Nick, please, which story would you like to tee up? What would you like to discuss, buddy? Mm. Mm. There are a number of subjects to discuss here today, P.O. Uh, the first is uh, the, the, the crypto price action is one that I just want to acknowledge. Yesterday, we were, was, no, it was two days ago we were on the call, right? When, on the uh, show? E no, no, no. Easy, you when and you, me when were. When you bought at 1550, two days ago. Yeah. So uh, now I sold off some last night because I saw the earnings disappointment is actually the main situation that appears to have been driving the ETH price action recently. So both Apple and Google missed earnings, uh, which was just bearish uh, sentiment overall uh, for the market. Now the jobs report comes in and that's positive. But right now, NASDAQ futures down 2%, S&P futures down 1.2%. And I think that's driving a lot of the crypto price action at this point in time. You know, as the uh, as the broader market goes, so does uh, crypto. Uh, we've been hoping for that uh, transition to change, um, or sorry, for that pattern to change. Part of that comes from the dollar pumping, though, <clears throat> with the jobs report. Dollar just absolutely flew when the jobs report came out, and uh, yeah, that usually you, causes you crypto that, to drop. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you said the jobs report was positive. The I mean, jobs, it was five x higher than expectations. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> someone's a negative, some numbers. Yeah, it was negative. It was positive in terms of there's more jobs, but yeah. So, uh, you know, who thought that uh, good numbers for uh, society is bad for the economy? But uh, uh, that's the way we're structured here in America, people. <laughs> um, so that you know, w welcome. Um, you got to get after your own cat. You know what I'm saying, and that's why we buy NFTs. Uh, in terms of uh, the price action moving forward, well, now I'm like, you know, I'm a little skeptical. I feel like maybe we had that pump and now I'm uh, I'm a little hesitant. I'm real curious before we move on from this uh, subject, if uh, uh, Kix was tempering his uh, his assessment of the price action the other day saying I'm uh, I'm not sticking in uh, Spencer, uh, similar sort of action said he had uh, sort of cut exposure uh, to ETH. And uh, easy though was aping in with me, uh, like uh, the the volatile trader that we both are. Which uh, what, where are y'all at right now today on on this particular price action? I think that I've been surprised, right? Like I I thought that we were gonna have a lot more of a hawkish Fed meeting, the Fed press conference than we did. They seem pretty soft. I think the. The earnings calls yesterday were um, were kind of interesting. You know, you had some big underperformances, but you had some big hits, right? Like Meta um, absolutely ripped smashed. yesterday. They smashed it. And so when when you have like that variance, um, it's just interesting to see. Uh, the The thing that's most interesting to me is like I have huge exposure to, to ETH being range bound because NFTs have been trading a short ETH vol. So like I hold a lot of NFTs. And so I was just cutting back ETH exposure because if ETH ran up or ran down, like bad news for nfts right if eth stays in this like between you know 1500 to 1700 like oh baby this is giving me a good good like month or so for nfts i think and I, i'm a cautiously optimistic but like i think that um 
I'm I'm actually just a little bit surprised to not have seen higher ETH volatility in the last um, day or so. And I think that that's pretty, pretty like good for us um, in terms of the NFT world, because there was this big existential risk that we had, you know, this is just a couple of days of high, of like what was supposed to be kind of high vol. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Let's get it on the uh, price action. Any, uh, I, you know, I still have some exposure that I aped into at that uh, bottom price. I'm up, but uh, uh, I did one top. Uh, I don't know if it was a top tick, but it was pretty damn close. Easy. Uh, do you have any more exposure or are you out? I still have exposure at the moment. Um, well, so so what, what's your move here? We wait. We see where the market breaks. All right. Well, nobody's uh, crushing it with trades right now. Seems fairly I'm, ambiguous. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in, Nick. I'm still sitting in. Guess what's coming back on the ETH daily in a gnarly way? The Bollinger Bands. <laughs> and what are they telling us, Kex? It's going to go up or down bigly. Mm, nice. Bigly. You're I'll saying let you you're know good. And I have a good idea of which direction that's going to be. But uh, for now, Mr. Bollinger just tells us a move will be made in a big way somewhere soon. I still got all of my ETH uh, buys. Um, I cut some alts. I bought a little Dogecoin because, once again, I still feel like this rally isn't done until Dogecoin does like a 30% daily candle. Then I'll just sell everything. That's that's what I hope for, at least, because it just makes life easier. But for the most part, I'm just buying Nick's favorite thing, uh, buffer ETFs. <laughs> uh, uh, Kix had brought up these ETFs before, and I said I never made money on them because uh, no one does make money on them. It's designed for the people who created the ETFs to make money, not for you, dummy. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the other uh, stories that were here, I'm okay. So uh, that we already addressed signals three uh, X or yesterday, uh, and we'll, I'll be waiting for her next call because she has not been missing recently. Just literally one good trade after the next. It her and Spencer are now like competitors in terms of uh, active trading in the NFT space. Soon enough. Well, I'm actually concerned that uh, Spencer is going to convince Signal to become a partner in his fund, and then we're going to be completely out of uh, uh, talent here. So that's where that's where he's headed. Uh, in terms of uh, the Beeple thing, does that? So we went from there. There was some bearish sentiment on this show as to the uh, proof of conference, but now it also sounds like you're saying that Larva Labs people are going to be there. So are they about to drop another NFT and we're going to, we're, we're going to know about in? that. I don't know about that, but I think, uh, you know, um, the, I mean, at the end of the day, it's extremely expensive for a conference. It's, uh, like over, uh, 1.5 ETH, uh, to go for the public. And if it's discounted, it's 0.75. And I just think in this environment, um, People don't want to put that kind of money down and it's Web3. People don't want to move from the couch, uh, get on a plane, you know, all that kind of stuff. So ticket sales have been pretty slow. I don't think they're completely minted out. So we're seeing that come through. Uh, the Beeble news didn't seem to um, push the number of sales. Uh, the team had a space yesterday where they say they're going to be having a heavier sort of uh, marketing presence on the conference. But I know it is what it is. Whoever ends up going, ends up going. And whoever doesn't, doesn't. I think it's the first one. We saw that with VCon last year. Uh, not many people bothered, as in lots of people bothered to go to VCon. But I think a lot of people are like, ah, oh, should I, shouldn't I? And most people are erred towards shouldn't. Then they had FOMO. And then they all saying that they're going to go this year. So I think... Uh, Proof needs to just sort of hit it out of the park on their conference. Um, and then potentially next year they could have a bigger audience. Um, but I think the barrier is just the cost, like plain and simple. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that on the on the cost front because I'm comparing it to like what area of the market do they sit in and like who who is the target audience? And there's a weird uh like there's people who buy NFTs and then there's people who go to conferences. And I don't know, you know, in terms of uh, those, how concentric those circles are, uh, whether or not, like how much they overlap. And uh, like, if you were talking about TED Talks or something like that, TED Conference, I think is $10,000 to go to. And there's a lot of conferences that exist uh, World Economic Forum, these sorts of like high-end conferences that are in the ten thousand dollar range, but, and, but that's their thing, right? Yeah. They, they've like you know carved that out for themselves, okay. right? 
totally. But I, I'm saying then then you have like tech trade shows sort of things, which is CES. You have uh, you have these temporary like other conferences that pop up, which are incredibly niche, where you have panels and you have speakers and you have other things. VCon is an example of this, but VCon is like it, it's like a weird. It, it's it's not clear that's that's not a standard conference it just it's its own thing and you can't compare it really to like the rest of uh the, the it's other not events. An nft conference yeah it's like it's a very con- v conference exactly it's like, it's like a concert it it's when like a popular went, rapper you know remember we were waiting in line and we were talking to people and we were like do you own any other nfts They're like nah i just own v friends like i don't even know what an nft is i just own this thing it's like uh, okay my, right. my favorite my, my like my like ingrained memory from vcon was that there was a line of like 180 people that you could wait in that got you inside the fence to then have the privilege and honor of waiting in a 300 person line to take a selfie with Gary. And I was like, wow, this is like, this man has built a brand, ladies and gentlemen. I saw him at the Knicks game last night and he pointed at me and waved. And I was like, did everybody see that? (laughs) Yeah, so Nick is one of the fanboys of Gary V. He's no, part of I'm, this audience. Me and him are close friends. I want to be clear. There's a distinction between a fanboy and a friend. Did you me get a and him with are him? friends and sorry, what? Did you get a selfie with him? A selfie with him? No, because I wasn't on the floor seat right next to him. I was four rows back. Nick, from you're the just floor. his exit liquidity. He just hits mm-hmm. you up to buy the shimmer V friends. That's it. Okay, well, we were once lovers. I didn't mean to throw that out there, but that was just kind of a thing as well. So I, there was a little transition there in between some of the people that he dated, and I just thought that like we, we were close, and a lot of people don't seem to understand that. But that's neither here nor there as it applies to conferences, okay? That was just a little bit of inside baseball. But what I was going to uh, say in terms of the conference to wrap up on this is we went from saying, like, I'm not sure about this event to now Beeple's giving out uh, every day is which the floor is 20 ETH. Well, that sounds like a pretty solid incentive to go. If like how many people are going to this conference, if you got a 10% chance of, of winning a 20 ETH, uh, uh, a 20 ETH ticket then, or a 20 ETH uh, piece of art, then you just, uh, you, the, the expected value of your uh, ticket is what po- uh, is two ETH. Well, it's 100 Right, because existing, ho- uh, existing holders is 100, and then 100 is for just conference participants. So 100, you know, out of uh, 4,000 is a two and a half percent, you know, opportunity there. It's an expensive conference, like Signal said. And even if you own one of these really expensive assets that he has, you have to pay what a 0.75 Ethereum, you know. And the and the other thing is like. I just don't know how uh, viral previous proof related events have been. I haven't heard anybody think that like a proof event was just explosively good. I could be wrong about that. Um, it also should be noted that the Twitter account for proof of conference only has like 3,500 followers. Just something to throw out there. I mean, um, that doesn't mean well, that, like I, I don't follow a co- conference accounts uh, for the most part, but. If that does that mean thirty five hundred people are attending the conference? Uh, no, there's twenty five hundred tickets that have been sold f- so far out of four thousand. Twenty five hundred? Wow, that's a that's that's a big event. There's going to be four thousand total tickets available. Well, you got to remember too. So I, I, I'm going to push back on this a little bit. I actually think proof events are very good within like NFT rankings. I put them probably like of NFT events probably second to Azuki events, like in terms of just pure event production quality. Um, now, the question is, like, good is in, the, the, there's, like, a, a, a subcategory of, like, who the proof audience tends to be. And it tends to be a lot of, like, web to, like, tech people who are either in the venture capital world or runs tech startups. It's a lot of that, that kind of crowd or just, like, listen to podcasts, right? Like, the, that's the crowd. I think similar to Gary Vee, there is a large section of, like, the proof ecosystem that's just people who are exclusively into proof. And so... I think you don't hear about it as much in like NFT Twitter because there's a lot of people in those circles that are like, to be fair, not in NFT Twitter, not in the rest of this sort of like, you know, curious corner of the internet that we occupy. And so I, I'm actually, I'm pretty excited um, to go to it. I think it'll just be a well-produced event. Like sometimes with NFT events, you just, you worry, right? You're like, oh man, did all these like 
18 year old anons get together and try and throw an event and have no idea how to do event planning and like that's not the case with this like they're gonna throw an event it's gonna be nice they're gonna give you a shot glass with a thing on it and you're gonna be like "Ooh, it's free shot glass and it'll make you feel like you're paid good money for your nice thing i also like you know you can look at the full price and say 1.5 ETH is full price i don't know any people are paying full price right i think it's like Either you're paying the 0.75 or if you had a proof pass, you got it for free. And then maybe there are some people, but I would expect like, like, I don't know. I have like hundreds of these discounted tickets that I didn't claim. Like there must be a market for people who are like claiming on behalf of others, right? The, uh, the question to me also is like, what's the floor of a Beeple piece, right? So like if there's only 2,500 people going, so you have a one out of 25 chance that your 0.75 ETH mints a Beeple piece. Like that's, the expected value of that is like pretty reasonably high, right? That's what I just said. That that was literally the math. I was saying, well, Ben, the, or the, the quick math was P.O. said the floor was 20 ETH. I, I don't know if that's actually accurate, but if if you can just do the math, get the expected value, it's it makes it worth buying a ticket, basically. And just on this point as well, just on where conferences are going in 2023, you're already seeing this bifurcation across the market where essentially projects are saying, we're not going to go to NFT NYC. We're not going to go to NFT LA. And instead, we're going to take the money that we would have spent there and do something for our own holders. So most likely, Azuki will do something in Asia, I imagine. Proof is doing this. Uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, we already know they're not going to be at NFT. Or Ape Fest is not going to be at NFT NYC. So I think... Um, what, what Proof are doing is on the path to what all projects are doing. And I think next year's um, sort of uh, group conferences like NFT NYC will look completely different. Um, but then it'll just come out, out to maybe, you know, there could be an Azuki event where there's only 3,000 tickets because not everybody wants to fly to Asia to go and have a party there. So I think we're pretty much seeing what's going to happen with the market. And so this data to me right now isn't that shocking that loads of people want to fly to L.A., for a conference. I like that the overall theme of uh, our conversations around this is, is this bullish? Is this bearish? Like that's, that's basically the sentiment around e even, even this thing for like, it's a conference. Like that's the bottom line. Like either people are going to go or well, they're not. I do think though that like it is generally overall bullish because again, one of the things that proof has that like very few other, if, if any other NFT products have is like Kevin has a lot of clout in web two. And we'll get a lot of Web2 people to come that are maybe not already exposed. Like, I think that the, the real pitch of this event is like, hey, you don't know anything about NFTs. You want to learn about Web3? Come, right? Like, that's where, like, you know, does Ape Fest do that? Like, not really, right? No. Ape Fest is just for no. the DGENs. But um, Proof Conference, like, it, it, Kevin's role in terms of, if you look at the overall ecosystem, I think Kevin's biggest role here is that he has an external audience that's very affluent and can buy into this space in a big way. He was very good at driving that. That's that's like holy why Moonbirds went up so much as they did. But like, can he get more people to come in and have a thesis on NFTs in general? This is one of the few events, if not the only event, I think this year that has the potential to actually onboard external people. It's a great uh, point. I, it, we didn't talk about the fact that it's one week before VCon. Which I think is definitely for the for the industry people that go to every conference and they like they love to go to every conference. I don't think that's a problem. I think they're like sick. I get to go to LA the week before VCon, then I go to VCon. I'm just ripping up conferences all year. But for like the average NFT market participant, I gotta think it's one or the other. I gotta so, think so. You know, R right? I mean, I don't know. Yes. Nick? Well, yeah. I. Yes, people are going to pick the conference that they go to. I want to move from uh, from uh, what appears to be. So we we summarized the conference, and right now we remain. Uh, it seems to be moderately lean bullish on this information with this conference. So uh, hats off to uh, proof. Uh, now I want to spin or turn the table to a bearish piece of information, and uh, that has to do with the duplicators. Uh, I've been watching the price action on these duplicators, and it's ain't it, it's ain't good. That's not it ain't English. good. It ain't good. Uh, it went from literally the uh, floor on these were 1.2 ETH on January 27th. They're now down to 0.39, uh, and I saw them even slightly lower yesterday, 0.38 or something like that was as low as it went. 
I don't understand the uh, dynamics between these duplicators. I'm assuming that they get burned in order to mint those NFTs that were on the uh, the, the clothing items, which looked decent and did have decent price price action. I don't know if we actually did a follow up with uh, how, how many um, how, what the price action is looking like on that site. What was it, Gaia Market? Uh, Gaia Marketplace. Yeah, there you go. I don't think the duplicators get burned. I think they get used. So that may be why the floor price mm. uh, goes down on them because they're kind of they've already been tapped out. I see. So you're like the floor of what you're buying are are duplicators that have been used essentially. So they're used duplicators. Uh, yeah, and they recharge. The right there. Like, yeah, they recharge over time. But okay, well then that uh the so, so and uh, another person says here they have perpetual utility. Well, that's interesting. So, is it, so should you be diving in and uh, picking up some of the cheap ones in the hopes that they uh, recharge and you sell it for an ETH? Yeah, you're probably taking advantage of a short attention span and and typically short time horizon that the NFT market uh, has. So if people are dumping those just to get whatever liquidity they can, and you can just wait for a recharge, recharge it might be something to look at. <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, Fran has been all over the digital wearables and I don't fade Fran when it comes to any of this stuff. So, I mean, look, there really might be something here with doodles. Dude, Go ahead. Uh, well, lit jacket just sold for $3,000. A leopard hoodie just sold for $1,100 holographic formal loafer sold for uh, nearly $800. So it's hard to call this uh, uh, unsuccessful. Unsuccessful, and there's a lot of activity over the past hour. There, a Sunday backpack sold for five thousand dollars. Another one for eight thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. If you if you check out the action on uh, on uh, the Gaia Marketplace, which you can see at o n g a i a dot com, you can check that out if you're interested in seeing the marketplace. You can click on Doodles Two and then Activity. I think it's and pretty fun to like trade around like the like clothing accessories and stuff. Well, so this was this was quite the shift on huh? this went from me opening it as a bearish piece of information to us suddenly being like, Doodles has done it again. <laughs> Doodles has Nick, done it again. Your old top shot, uh, I did. What's Maybe that? Some, uh, you can log in with your old Top Shot uh, login. Really? So you're trying to? Uh, so they're trying to revive that uh, uh, yeah. marketplace. I, I actually, made easy. On. I made easy sign up uh, on on the live stream the other day, and it takes like thirty seconds, man. It's just an email. Uh, you get your uh, Dapper wallet, and you're good to go. Well, this is uh, that's an interesting uh, factoid right there. I see a coffee helmet sold for fifteen hundred dollars. Another concentric circle question. How many Top Shot collectors do we think are interested in trading Doodles wearables? Uh, and also, what's the duration between now like and the Doodles 2 when you can actually utilize these clothing? Those would be the two questions I have for this. Does anybody know? Unsure. Yeah. I think it would be a, a question uh, for old... Um, Franelations. Someone commented that Fran's been tweeting like this is Bitcoin in 2009, which is pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, definitely off to an extremely hot start. Uh, the doodles are with this collection. I'll throw to Nick for the next subject of discussion. Just want to remind everyone that the show is sponsored by us, our newsletter. First tweet that's pinned to the top is for you to sign up to our newsletter. Sign up at the nifty.com, T H E N I F T Y.com. Goes out seven. Seven days a week with analytics and Monday through Friday, also the top stories as you hear them recapped uh, here on the show. If you miss the show, if you don't have time to listen to the show, the newsletter gives you a high level understanding of all the news events that happen in the NFT space. And wink, wink, the newsletter is going to be integrated into all of the things that we have rolling out. Right. Hey, for the we're rest not of the year. we're not saying we're not saying what we're doing with it anymore. Pia, you're th you're, okay. you're just okay. revealing all the information. I got tired of you know, making promises, letting people know. Okay. And, you know, it's just not, it, you know, I'm tired of, we've given too many clues and hints. We've given too many clues and hints and the people, they get it. Either they're going to make it and they're on the newsletter at the nifty.com or they're not. And it's just like, I'm tired of giving them information. We're investing, honestly, a sizable amount into uh, really hooking you up there. But I'm tired of hinting at all, all of this stuff uh, that we have coming. Um, 
instead, you know, well, either you believe or you don't. And uh, either you're on the list or you're not. And yep. uh, and here is an incentive we keep delivering, which is giving away a portal PO. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say some other. Uh, so wait, are we giving away? Is, th- is that what you just? Uh... No, that was kind of like a half offer. So that's a that's a real question as to whether or not we do it. You know what? Let's just do it three days in a row. I mean, this is getting out of control. I get we file. I gave away the two that were promised uh, for uh, I guess Thursday and Wednesday. So if you want a portal, we're giving away another. I feel like we got to be running out of portals at some point because I'm treating this like uh, they're cheap when they're not. It's four hundred dollars every single time we're doing this. So uh, uh, sign up at the nifty.com. We'll uh, draw another person to win a portal. That's what I'm talking about. Just uh, some other shout outs before I throw back to Nick to continue the discussion. We got Sir Pink in the audience uh, saying that his favorite book is Sapiens. Really popular book. Blew mm, up over the past seven, eight years. Book. Yeah, it's a popular book. Uh, we got, you know, King Sakasi Dottie saying Silent Power by Stuart Wild. So that's uh, an interesting title. Not familiar right with that one. Not familiar. Is that the, Paul, the power from deep within your loins? Uh, maybe Ziga, uh, said hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. That's a big name, uh, for sure. And then last one, Vicky J said, heal your life by Luis. Hey, well, thank you to everybody that has contributed their favorite books. Hopefully people can look through and find another book to read. Nick, what was the next topic you wanted to discuss? Well, so here was one that we had brought up in the, uh, in the newsletter, which was the board ape yacht club, uh, released a leaderboard video. Are they are they going head to head with us now, PO? Like I'm trying to figure I'm trying to figure out is Board Ape Yacht Club trying to come for the crown? You know that's what I'm saying. Like I compare Board Ape. Usually there's two there's two uh, groups that get compared together on a regular basis. Board Ape Yacht Club, the Nifty. I agree. Board Ape Yacht Club, the Nifty. They they compare those two things. They look at Signal writing the newsletter. And uh, and then they look at um, Board Ape Yacht Club. This video they put together, it's a, it's a decent production. I like what they what they did here. Um, and uh, instead of breaking news, they have breaking dukes. I'm not sure I like that uh, particular one. They're really leaning into the uh, shit, but they're including tweets from other people. This is uh, like you know I I gotta say. Um, it's pretty nice production quality that they have here. And uh, it's like they have like kind of a mini uh, internal media company within Board Ape Yacht Club, essentially. Uh, there was the podcast that the Board Ape founders were doing. I don't know what the status uh, is of that with uh, uh, Gordon Goner's health uh, condition. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this video was a solid production. They're calling it the leaderboard. And it's really about... Um, it's covering uh, just Dookie Dash right now, but this is fascinating to see because I'm not sure does does any does uh, Epic Games you know have an equivalent thing that they do with uh, Fortnite? Like, the, is is are any of the other gaming companies doing something similar? Like a leaderboard showcasing the top players, and and that's the leaderboard is the name of the show to be clear. So you check out on the Board Ape Yacht Club uh, Twitter account. And you don't even need to play it with the audio on. You can just sort of see the format that they're that they're doing there. But I'm wondering, like, do other gaming companies actually utilize this sort of engagement uh, format? Because I think it's interesting. I think it's pretty cool that they have a video production team uh, that's putting that together. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, I, I I just thought it was an it was an interesting thing, and it maybe provides a glimpse into some of their engagement strategies moving forward uh with maybe some of their other games like if they have a team that's producing this sort of like video production to be like in the today's and highlighting those players that's a pretty interesting thing to like uh, as an engagement loop especially considering as you say po twitter is where nft land exists and uh and they're leaning into that by producing that content natively on twitter i don't think they publish this anywhere else uh maybe in the discord but i, I don't think they're publishing it to youtube 
That's that's really smart. They definitely understand the value of content. That's clear. Like that when they started the podcast, I detected that. And then this uh, absolutely plays into it. Also, they were knocking down episodes of the podcast. I was actually surprised at how many episodes of the podcast they actually put out. Um, I don't know the status of it now. Wouldn't be surprised if it continues, quite frankly. But yeah, Nick, no, I'm on the same page as you. I I think it's uh, definitely pretty interesting stuff the way that they're they're handling it. So the other thing I'm curious about here is this uh, three-hour holding protection period. What, what's the deal with this from OpenSea, um, where they're, uh, they're, to mitigate theft-related risks, sellers will be prevented from accepting offers on certain items for three hours. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, is that just like suspicious collections, new collections? Is that basically the deal there? No, no, I think this, easy this, just... Oh, good. I was gonna say, this is the same thing as what um, Blur does. So basically, if it's been transferred within the last three hours from a transaction that's not a buying or selling transaction, um, it will have a flag on it so that like, you know, and I think this is this is way overdue, right? Like this is the most obvious thing to do of all time because, OK, an NFT just got transferred like in a transaction that either drained a wallet or transferred a bunch of stuff like these transactions don't look like other transactions, right? And so having some sort of cool down before you can just dump it to a weath offer, which is enough time, three hours and enough time to report a theft and get it flagged, like makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a ton of sense. So this is really a, a theft protection mechanism because the way that it works when you get your NFT stolen is the scammers basically instantly dump it on the market. So uh, this is, uh, my question is, does that also mean that they can also send that back to you is it like and how, how do they recover it in that scenario or is what they're saying that three hours is that essentially they're, they're going to determine whether or not to make it uh uh like th- they can block it from being liquidated on OpenSea. yeah it just, it's just as a period of time to flag it hmm. but good luck getting that asset back yeah, it's unclear. Yeah, it just, just kind of stops the chain of, you know, the person then dumping that asset to a legitimate buyer who had a collection offer and now they're stuck with a flagged asset and they can't trade it. Like it happens to like Franklin all the time with apes. Like I think it happened to him twice in a week or something like that. All right. Well, that's what you get from the uh from the open sea side of things where they're uh look it sounds like they decided to put together a cobble together a development team there uh, in recent months, which Crazy is the idea phenomenal to see, uh, you know, the thing that I'm still waiting on uh, seeing. And I think, you know, like I said, I don't want to hint at what we're working on, but I just want to say like, we're, we're coming for the top spot. Like we're not, we're not out of here playing around, just trying. Uh, everyone's like, Oh, they're just, they're a podcast. Look at those podcast guys and girls. Look at them doing a podcast. That's real cute. Uh, I just want to say, keep underestimating us, okay? Because we have a different view, vision of the future, which I think is going to transform the entire landscape of NFTs as a whole. And if, you, if you're underestimating us, you're dumb. Okay? <laughs> so in, the, like... in the words of uh, Michael Scott, you know, maybe next time you'll just estimate me. Uh, exactly. <laughs> maybe next time you'll estimate me. So anyways, uh, the one last item that was in there, I don't even know if it's worth, uh, I don't have anything to add to this one, but it is a ridiculous, actually, I do have some context for this. So last night I'm at the, uh, I'm at the Knicks game and we're, where my friend, my buddy has seats are directly like four or five be- behind the, um, behind the floor, but we're behind, uh, for the first half the opposing team's basket, basically. Uh, and so all of the away people are in this area. There was literally like two guys about to get in a fight right behind me because one of them called the other one a pussy. And that guy was like, how dare you do that to me in front of my wife? Like, and literally was like, I, like words started being thrown. But anyways, that's not the point of this story. I just thought that was ridiculous. This, these were grown men and this guy was drastically affected by the, by the other guy calling him names the uh the one of the guys on the Miami Heat's bench who was not playing was fully blinged out 
This guy had neck. Uh, at first, I saw his earrings. He has diamond earrings that he's rocking, and I'm like, I'm like, damn, that seems like a ridiculous purchase. Like this guy's got diamond earrings that he's wearing. Then he turns around and he's got a like a necklace that had to have been like a hundred thousand dollars. Like I don't know how much it was, but it was just like diamonds encrusted around like the entire necklace. He had a bracelet. He had a ring. The amount of jewelry that this guy had had to have been like a tenth of his salary. Now it's supposedly this is some all star player. Uh, and I, I don't, I couldn't even tell you the name. I'm not a basketball aficionado. If you want to, if you happen to be one, you should be on so rare right now Our one of our sponsors, but that's neither here nor there. The reason that I brought this up was because information was shared in our newsletter about Hublot and Takashi Murakami unveiling a unique rainbow gemstone, gemstone watch. I'm looking at this thing saying, well, I like my Apple Watch, so I'm not. I, I would never. I'm not in the market for this particular set of um, uh, th this this product, basically. But there's definitely people who are. There's many uh, watch aficionados. Uh, I'm just not one of them. Uh, but I'm wondering. There's also an NFT associated with this. But I saw the picture of it. It's pretty blinged out. I'm wondering, like. What's the demand for this thing? Is this something that anybody cares about? And is Hublot really like a big name? Hublot, uh, like Hublot and it's a huge name. In, in, the, in, in the watch industry, it is the brand to, to, to spend your cash on. I can tell you that. This really? thing, okay. this thing okay. is going to, this thing, 100% gone, like the 12th, the 13th, gone. And then the secondary will go at a premium. Uh, but I think it's really cool because now you're actually seeing watch brands starting to use blockchain technology in their products. And I like how they're doing it on like limited edition uh, sets. They're also doing it with an artist who is recognized globally, as well as somebody who is in the NFT space and has lots of experience with uh, his own collections. I think for the, the right buyer, like the person who is like, this will be bought by somebody who already buys Ublo watches and also appreciates fine art as well from people like Takashi from artists so, like Takashi, uh, uh, Takashi Murakami. I don't know about Ublo, and I see a lot of people saying they're trash. I, I the, Look, that, that brand is not for me. If you got me a Rolex, I'd be like, yo, we made it. Dude, I sold a business uh, years ago for uh, the first time in my life, I had more than $100,000 in my bank account. That's that, I was pretty young. And uh, uh, the the the... It, and I had basically like a million dollars sitting in in my bank account, and I went to the Rolex store saying, "Your boy's got cash. It's time to it's time to go buy something." And I go in to the Rolex store, and I'm like, "What's your cheapest watch, sir?" And he was like, fifty thousand dollars." And I was like, "Have a great day." And I just walked the fuck <laughs> out of there because I was like, "There's no way in hell you're getting me to buy a fifty thousand dollar watch. I'll buy jewelry." Or something, an accessory, but it's going to be no more than like a thousand dollars, and and I'll be, and and I'll have like one of them or two of them. Like there's no there's no way that I'm uh like I'd ever be like that basketball player, even if I had. Well, I don't know. It'd be hard for me to say if I had thirty million dollars, would I get suckered into spending a hundred grand on uh, jewelry? Maybe actually, <laughs> like that, like that may. That that may be a hey, it's situation. Nikki two chains. <laughs> Nick, hey Nikki two chains. I actually. I'm about to do a reveal. I did buy something, which I think, uh, you know, punks did the Tiffany's, uh, the, the item. And th those, those are $50,000 for each one of those, uh, pendants, uh, for the punk pendants. And I'm like, who's, who's rocking those? Like, I'm just interested in who's rocking those. I found out a way to get something similar for $800. And, uh, I'm about, I'm, I'm going to do a little reveal here and see if I was smart, a genius, or if this was maybe one of the dumbest purchases ever. But uh, I'm just a little teaser. In the interim, Ublo, great that we can pronounce it correctly. I don't know about the brand, but I love, like Signal said, we've discussed before how Rolex has a massive opportunity with NFTs, and I would most definitely be buying. Um, well, if it's fifty thousand dollars, I'm not like I'm just saying straight up like that just isn't happening. Um, but we'll see. Someone said Nick needs an iced out pint of ice cream around his neck, and I actually kind of agree with that. That actually would be uh, would be a good idea.
that's it. That's all I got for uh, today's news uh, subjects. And I just ate up all the time in the show, Pia. No, it's okay. Uh, so easy and signal. I'd be curious. You know, we had our little, uh, you know, maneuver yesterday. I think everybody, you know, me, Nick, signal, easy, uh, maybe kicks. I'm not sure. Took advantage of that. Made a little bit of a profitable trade. Are there any trades that you're looking at today? Anything in the market that you think is interesting today? It's tough to say. Um, this project... <laughs> Like, I, I think checks top is in personally. Uh, yesterday, people were calling for two and a half, three ETH on these. And usually when the timeline's buzzing about that and the lagging trade was definitely merged. Like I got in even later than the morning show. I got in at like 0.025 and sold at like 0.06. But uh, I, I swept 25 of them. So like that size ended up being a nice little return. Even like at 30%, it was, it was, it was decent. I was happy with it. But now people are looking for like other ones that devs launched, et cetera. There's this project, Den Deca Den that announced yesterday that the team behind it is actually the creators of Dragon Ball Z and a few other animes. And that ran from 1-2 all the way up to 3-5, and now is settling back around like 2-7. It's a little bit pricier, but the team being like this huge industry leader for like anime and massive brands has me a little bit interested. So I'm going to start keeping more tabs on that. There's also like, we're seeing good volume on Wolf Game Land again today. In the last 15 minutes, 10 plots of land have sold. So there's something with gaming right now that has me really interested. I was watching Bryson's stream yesterday and he was playing the imposters game, which is among us. Elliot's, yeah. Yeah. And I was like fascinated by it because it looks really good. Like I even responded, I was like, how do I play this? Because I just want to play it and see what's going on with it. So I think gaming's gonna end up this year having some deliverables that are gonna surprise people. And I'm looking at like gaming tokens too, especially with like the success and consistent volume wolf game scene. It has me really interested. As far as like secondary today for like intraday moves, nothing is really on my radar, to be honest. Like Loud Punks is going to go to public. So I'm going to watch how that trades. But I don't know if I'm actually going to trade it because it's like this 1.5 cost has a lot of people kind of like looking away from it, I guess, you know? And they sold 1,100 in whitelist one. And now there's offers on the floor that are just over mint. So it's tough to say. We saw Ponzi NFT launch their token yesterday and that went flying. Token got up to 20 cents, NFT to 0.2. And then the token tanked because uh, there was a contract issue. And now that floor price has plummeted. But like there's certainly volume still circulating across the market. So I'll just keep an eye on Blur. I tend to just have it up and see where volume circulating and then uh, do a little bit of research. But nothing like shocking where I'm like, I need to go buy this. Signal it. Your eyes on anything today? No, I don't have my eyes on anything today. I'm just, I'm just like watching, like watching stuff and seeing where interest is going. I think Easy covered the opportunities really well. Um, you're seeing Sewer Pass consolidate at 2.5, which is interesting. Obviously, you're seeing a lot of capital rotate out of that when it hit 3.2 and it's pulled back down to 2.5. So that's something interesting to look at. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I'm just looking, researching, seeing what sentiment is across the different discords. And when there's an opportunity, the morning show will be the second to know after me. Uh, Very nice signal. Uh, Nick, real quick, you got Bunny with his hand raised. Bunny, yeah, what's so going so on, so. amigo? Yeah, the Killer Bears artist has an open edition for like 0.02 ETH uh, today. Uh, so I'm going to be keeping my eye on that to see how big it gets. Because, I mean, the Killer Bears was a free mint that sold in at like a 3.69 floor. So... Another open edition. They're still, uh, you know, milking the cow, so to speak. Uh, Nick, you, you were going to chime in? No, I was I was going to toss to uh, Bunny as well. Node has his hand raised. Node, why don't you close out the show, buddy? All right. So yesterday I realized I laid out my entire thesis on what I've been up to. So I'll share it here on the show, which is uh, mid-tier art blocks. You know, those are that are priced somewhere between two and ten ETH. Uh, those are the that's what I've been looking at, and if, I I didn't really realize that that was my, my strategy, but that's clearly where I'm most bullish long term. So I'm looking at art blocks that have been hanging out in the range of two to ten ETH uh, for various reasons. Number one, all, most of the beautiful collections are in that range. They've obviously developed a strong kind of customer base or collector base to hold, you know, a decent uh, ETH floor, and they're they're a little bit of liquid. Um, but because of the of that lack of liquidity as well, like the smaller supply also helps when things really decide to rip. And so my strategy has been, you know, on and off throughout this year has been to throw out some uh, some offers, right? Some weath bids on things that I like. So I recently picked up a few. I picked up a screens by Thomas and Peterson, which I've 
always wanted. Uh, and I've only got one left that I really, really want, which is an anti-cyclone by William Lapon. So I, that is my, that's been my whole strategy and it's going to continue to be because I think that value will continue to accrue to these, uh, art blocks collections that have, that have kind of held their weight throughout this bear. So that is it. Anti-cyclone pushing a 10 ETH floor, incredible artwork on this one. Not surprised that the market's favoring it the way that it is. What do you think about, uh, the one by pear Christian Stoveland, I believe is his name. I could be butchering that name. Uh, it yeah, is harvest. Yes. I, so I think it's awesome. My challenge is so some collections like <laughs> memories of Chilin, I would say like there's not there's not a single piece in that collection that I would wouldn't that I wouldn't mind owning. Like I think all of them are beautiful. Um, and this collection, the harvest there, the there's like some that are grails. I think it was it may have been D Farmer that picked some up recently and they looked freaking amazing. And so I, but the problem is for me is a lot of them I don't necessarily like the look of. Um, so it's harder for me to want to buy in uh, because like the ones on the floor, I might be like, well, they, they don't, it's not exactly what I like. However, it's got a lot of momentum. Um, and I think it would not surprise me to see that one kind of uh, inch closer to the 10 ETH floor. I don't think it'll hang out there, but I could be wrong. A lot of whales have been picking those up. Um, but again, they're they're getting the they're getting the specific pieces in the collection that look really great. Um, and you know, some of the other ones they just don't have enough. Like for whatever reason, for me, it doesn't seem as complete of a of an image uh, as as some of the ones that these guys are picking up. So I I would I would be putting in collection offers, but I don't want to get stuck with one that I just don't like for whatever reason got it man well hey look that's our show ladies and gentlemen uh some people were tweeting that this was their first time listening to the show you'd be surprised uh 20 of the listeners on any given day it's their first time listening to the show so we do it monday through friday 9 a.m to 10 15 a.m eastern time each and every week it's also available on apple and spotify podcasts and the simulcast video stream on youtube all of the links are available uh if you can't find anything just hit me up uh there's they're in my link tree on the nifty account they're all uh you know demonstrated or, or pinned to the top over there uh we will be back on monday reminder to subscribe to the newsletter t-h-e-n-i-f-t-y.com oh i gotta pick a winner oh nick's gotta pick a winner he didn't forget today pick well, the winner I'll, nick I'll, I'll i'll do it right after the show i mean they're getting an email whoever they are so i'm all right if, right if you now. won you're gonna get an email from us ladies and gentlemen subscribe to the newsletter it's not gonna stop t-h-e-n-i-f-t-y.com thank you so much for